Welcome to my channel. My name is Chris and I'm a self-taught developer. I've been programming for about three years and I've had my fair share of struggles along the way, particularly when first starting out. I knew that I wanted to learn how to code and how to understand what computers were doing and how they worked, but I didn't really know where to start. I decided to make this channel to help people get started learning about computer science and to build a community of like-minded people who are eager to learn so the videos are going to start out very beginner friendly so that everyone has a good understanding when we start getting into more complex topics. It might be the case that you're interested in computers but aren't really exactly sure what computer science is and what to expect. So computer science is all about problem solving and just learning how to express yourself in code in different languages so that you can actually solve problems of interest to you regardless of the field that you're in. So the ability to solve problems, analyze data, and do interesting things are all beneficial. So it's not going to come without its frustrations, and it's going to be a lot of hard work, but it's so empowering when you finally solve that problem that's been weighing on you. There are going to be things that look very cryptic, especially if you've never programmed before, but with practice and over time, everything will start to make more sense. And that really is the key to becoming successful in this field. It might feel like there's a lot of information coming at you all at once, and there is, but just take your time, rewatch things if something doesn't quite make sense, and feel free to reach out if you have any questions. And remember, what matters really is just where you end up relative to yourself when you started. So, alright, so we're going to be covering a wide range of computer science topics on this channel. I wanted to give you a high level overview of what we're going to be covering. Uh, we're going to start by setting up a common environment so that all of us are able to start writing code as well as learning about an operating system which you probably aren't very familiar yet with yet if you haven't been programming before or done much with computers. So to accomplish this we're going to download and install a program called VirtualBox which is going to allow, allow us to create virtual environments or virtual machines. This is going to allow us to emulate a different operating system, no matter what your host operating system is, whether it's Mac, Windows, or Linux. Um, this isn't required to follow along. However, I highly suggest you take the time to set it up. Uh, you'll learn a little bit about Linux, and you know everybody will be on the same page. And I'll walk you through every step of the way. So doing this will let us start coding much faster and, and not having to try to set up everything on different machines. So along with this, I'm going to be introducing some industry standard tools um, that after this course you'll be familiar with and you'll be using in the real world. So after our virtual machines configured and set up, um, we'll start to explain more in-depth computational thinking. Um, and how to think more like a computer and to clean up our thought process so that we can think about problems more methodically and ultimately be able to transition and translate that into code. Um, after that, we're going to start to introduce you to your, a more traditional language, an older and lower level language called C, um, with which we will start to write some code and explore some lower level details that are important to understand and we'll introduce building blocks such as variables, loops, conditions, functions, more, a bunch more. Um, after that we're going to take a look under the hood, so to speak, of your computer's RAM or random access memory where all the data is going to be stored so that we can understand what's really happening inside our computers when we write code. Um, we'll look at bugs, mistakes in our code, um, how we can find them and fix them and what we like to call debug our code. Um, then we're going to transition into algorithms, how we can write algorithms to solve problems such as searching or sorting, which are two very common operations in programming. And along the way we'll use metaphors like this to kind of help drive home ideas. Um, we're going to talk about problems that can arise in our computer. Um, design flaws in a sense because our computers have a finite amount of memory you can imagine that if something requires more memory than we have things can go bad um, problem 
programs can crash, bugs can occur, and we can even see unforeseen consequences. Um, next, we're going to focus on what are called data structures. Structures that we can build inside our computer's memory that can organize our data and ultimately help us solve more complex problems more efficiently. After data structures, we're going to transition away from C and into a higher level language called Python. If you have any prior programming knowledge, you may be asking why C and then Python. And the answer to that is because you have to understand what is happening at a lower level so that you can appreciate all the features Python gives you and these higher level languages are going to give you. You'll see in the upcoming videos the benefits we get from learning a language like C first as well as the drawbacks and same thing for Python. Each language is going to have its pros and cons. C for example is very fast however it may be more tedious to write large programs in while Python on the other hand lets us get work done fast however it's not as fast as C. It's actually quite slower. Um, we'll see how these languages are built upon each other. For example C, the language we'll be introducing later in the course was actually implemented using C. So there's a ton of other topics I've planned after this but I'm just gonna fly through some keep this video on the shorter side. After Python, we'll look at databases using a, a language called SQL or SQL so that we can store large volumes of data and be more organized. Then we're going to look at the web, mainly with three new languages, HTML, which is not a programming language, but it's a markup language that lets us design web pages. Then we'll go into CSS, which is a styling language, it lets us add style to our web pages. And finally, JavaScript, which is a true programming language, which lets us manipulate things on our web page. We'll take a look at frameworks, libraries, and third-party code that we can use to help build out full-blown web applications. From there, we will start to explore more complicated topics and paradigms altogether, eventually working our way toward game development, AI, blockchain development, much more. Alright, so thank you all so much for checking out my channel. I hope you catch me in the next video.